Jordan Firemark, thanks for coming on this video with me to share about how you're rocking the podcast. Um, I just, thanks. Yeah, so you have three podcasts, and we're just going to talk about a couple of them. So you really are a podcast rock star. Tell us about your three podcasts and then the purposes of each one of them. Okay, well, the first one is called Entertainment Law Update, and that's sort of what I do for a living is entertainment law. So that is designed to build authority and get potential clients and referral sources to know, like, and trust me. I do that with a co-host, but we don't really interview people. So that's not exactly on point with what we're talking about here today. The other two are the Law Podcasting Podcast and Entertainment Industry Insights, which again ties into the entertainment business where I do most of my stuff. So Law Podcasting Podcast is a show where I talk to other lawyers who have podcasts. Actually, you were interviewed on that show as well. Um, We just talk about podcasting as a tool for marketing law practices and uh, so on. And and that's that's huge. I do that show almost every week. And you have a course. So Mm -hmm. that podcast is a big marketing engine for the course that you have, right? Exactly. It sort of provides the social proof. You know, when you're trying to sell something, you want to be able to show, hey, other people or on this bandwagon and you should be too. And so my thinking by interviewing all these other lawyers who have podcasts, even if they didn't take my course and learn from me, at least I can use them to illustrate the power of the podcasting as a medium and a tool. And uh, yeah, it's it's helped a lot in selling the course. Yeah. And then your entertainment law podcast, the interviews, what kind of interviews do you do on that show? Or do you do interviews on that show? Yeah. On Entertainment Industry Insights, the interviews are with thought leaders and influencers in the entertainment industries, theater, film, television, music, whatever, new media and all that. And that really is about me having a, I don't want to call it a pretext, but a good reason to call someone that where I'm not just hitting them with a say, hey, you should hire me as your lawyer. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity for me to get to know them and them to get to know me in in a way that is helping them theoretically as much as it helps me. Mm -hmm. And so that's been fantastic for me because it's, taken the pressure off that initial, you know, oh, there's an ideal client. How do I go approach them? It's, oh, interview them on the show. That's a warm, friendly kind of a way to do it. And it has worked. It has worked. I've had, I've only done a few episodes every time Uh I spot these people and I I set them up. I'd say I've got about an 80% success rate in converting those folks into clients. Uh You know, I tell, I love that because I tell people all the time when they think about starting a podcast. In fact, I was just on the phone. Somebody called me cold today. It's on my website. Mm-hmm. Called and was like, I'm the marketing director for this company. And I'm like, we're thinking about podcasting. I have no idea anything about podcasting. And you tell me about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously I talked to him about being a guest on podcasts. But I said, you should also have your own because you can interview those people mm-hmm. that you would want to be your client. And I think that's where most podcasters see success in their business. It's not getting the big celebrities and the big influencers, but it's interviewing people that you think you would want to do business with in some way. Yeah. And, and as long as you're providing a service to the rest of your audience, right. it, it, it's, it's still valuable content. It's a mm-hmm. win-win. Absolutely. So 80% success rate in converting those people. What does the, people always want to know, what's the follow-up? I mean, when do I go in for the kill and when do I set up that next conversation? Like, how does that work for you? You know, I haven't had to do a lot of chasing them down after the interview. I'll, I'll, and, and when I say converting them into client or converting a client, I've had some of them just refer me clients and yeah. that's been good. Some of them have become clients themselves and some have just been, you know, good resources of people that I've, I've teamed up with one on a, a sort of a joint venture project that we're doing. I, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, one of them, uh, we co-wrote an ebook together and we're using that oh. as a, as another tool. So it's really just been a great way of expanding a network of, you know, close key contacts. The follow-up that I do do, of course, is after a the interview, I thank them and I remind them when the episode is coming out and ask them to share on social media, the the usual kind of stuff. And then I do, I just sort of try to keep in touch and and sort of nurture the friendship a little bit. But um, uh, fortunately, it's worked out fast and easy for me. Do you have geographic limitations as a lawyer? Do you focus on interviewing people in California or how does that work for you? You know, that's a great question. Lawyers are licensed on a state-by-state basis, but those of us that practice in a particular industry reach outside that a little bit. I'm not a litigation attorney, so I don't rely on court proceedings and stuff. I view my work as anything that has a nexus with the California-based entertainment industry. So if there's a client from Connecticut who's doing business with an L.A. company, 
they need a lawyer in California, or they can at least use a lawyer yeah. in California to negotiate those deals. And so unless there's just no connection, I will sort of handle it. And so I interview folks, again, because they're influencers and thought leaders, mm-hmm. I want to share information from those kinds of folks with my audience, whether they're going to hire me later as a client or not. Yeah. It's valuable for the audience. And again, social proof, audience listens. And, you know, some of the people I've interviewed on that show are other lawyers who aren't ever going to hire me, yeah. <laughs> but maybe refer some business or whatever. So to help you keep rocking the podcast, what are the ideal guests that you are always seeking for your show? And then what are the ideal podcasts that you want to be on? Because I want folks that are tuning into this video, I want the right people to be reaching out to you. Mm -hmm. Well, as far as ideal guests, I mean, uh, you know, lawyers who have podcasts fits one to a, to a T and I want to hear their success stories, their challenges and, and all of that. On the other side, on the entertainment industry insights, Anybody who is in the entertainment industry and has either a different approach or just has achieved a lot of success that, you know, they can share some insights with with my audience. I know you're never supposed to say anyone who (laughs) when you talk about ideal, but really that's a pretty narrow group anyway. So and what about uh, you want as a guest expert? Who is that ideal you know, target audience for, well, for you as a parent. Yeah. So my expertise as a practicing lawyer is in the area of podcasting law. I'm actually going to be giving a, a CLE on that, a continuing education program on that oh. in, a, in a few weeks. So folks that are have that are teaching other podcasters about the podcasting and want to gather information about the legal aspects of that, intellectual property and entertainment, particularly the theater, film, and television industries, folks who are catering an audience of people working in those businesses and uh, starting up businesses in that area, those kinds of things. That's really my target That's awesome. clientele. And where can people find you online and listen to your podcast? Is there one hub or is there a couple different sites you can tell us about? Well, the good news is if you go into iTunes and you search on my last name, Firemark, uh-huh. that will serve as the hub. It'll it'll nice. bring all that together. There aren't too many other Firemarks in the world. Okay. So I'm fortunate with that. But Firemark.com is my law firm website. And no, I don't actually promote the law podcasting podcast there. I do promote entertainment industry insights and entertainment law updates. So firemark.com, great way to find me. And uh, lawpodcaster.com is is the other one. Thanks for being here, Gordon. Thank you, Jess. It's been great.